Come on and put in the chair. He is risen. Oh, mama, shake it up. Nothing is too hard for you. We bless you, Lord God. You are an awesome God. You are mighty God. We thank you for being true and faithful to us, oh God. We bless you, Lord God, because you are a good God. You are mighty. You are holy God. And we thank you, Father, for being a righteous one. We thank you, God, for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. We give you glory and honor. We thank you that you have risen again. We thank you, Father, for moving by your spirit. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just worship the Lord. I just feel a worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just lift the name of Jesus' name on high. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, praise you. Oh, I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, come on, yes.
you, God. We worship you this morning, Pastor Norman. Would you do us the pleasure of praying for the Lord this morning? Glory to God. And this is just rising. Thank you, Lanez. Thank you, Adele Roy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Pastor Norman. Father God, we bless you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, not only are we rejoicing in this day, Lord God, we are rejoicing in this season that we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that it's not just a physical resurrection uh, for him, but it is also a resurrection for us, Lord God, that we have the ability and the right to overcome, to rise above whatever tries to hold us down, whatever tries to contain us. Father, even the naysayers that says it can't be done or we can't be whatever you designed and desired us to be. Father, we thank you that we can overcome all of the gravity of doubt and the gravity of the naysayers, Lord God, and rise to the level of uh, glory that you've caused us and called us to be, Lord God, that your grace and your your favor is on our lives and in unprecedented levels, Lord God. We're walking in a level on, uh, that has never been seen before, Lord. We're seeing greater grace. We're seeing greater miracles, greater breakthroughs, Lord God. We're becoming more of you, Lord God, than ever before, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this is the season that we've set aside to recognize your resurrection. And Father, I pray now as Jesus was raised from the dead that we will all rise from our circumstances, the things that tries to hold us down, Lord God, the caves and the graves that, uh, that the world, or maybe even we ourselves have put ourselves in, Lord God, that you've given us the grace and the ability to rise up from it and become all that you've designed us to be. Now speak to our hearts deeply, Lord God, till we're transformed and transfigured into the image of Christ, Lord God, according to your word in Ephesians, Lord God, that you sent Christ that we might grow into the fullness of the stature of Christ, Lord God, that we'll walk uh, by faith and not by sight. We give you praise. We give you glory for this room, for the apostle, Lord God, and for the moderators and for those that are on social media and here in Clubhouse. Father, we thank you that you will bless them, bring them to a new awareness, open our eyes that we might see what we've never seen before, hear what we've never heard before, and be what we've never been before. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sound of something of Zion. Make the announcement today, my God. I know it's been Friday, but we're already in the future, my God. He has risen. Come on, let's just worship the Lord. If you believe that today, you might as well begin to rejoice. He has risen. We're making an announcement. You can't find him in the grave. Hallelujah. The true and living God. Huh? Listen to the old glory of God. Come on, put in the chat. He has risen. Thank you, Jesus. Christ has won the victory. Thank you, Jesus. I just want y'all to hear a little bit of that. He is risen. Come on and give the Lord a praise up in here. We don't have no sad story because he is risen. We don't have a sad story. My God, we glorify God. Thank you, Bernadette. My God, glorify God. He is risen. Crown him, crown him, Lord of Lords. King of Kings, come on. Crown him Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We crown him Lord of Lords. Ha. Oh my God, glory to God. We crown him Lord of Lords. Crown him Lord of all. Crown him Lord of all. My God, we thank and praise God because he has risen and we crown him Lord of Lords today, forever and ever and ever. God is so good. I just come in. Come on. We crown him. 
Put in the chat. We pray on them. We're celebrating Jesus. Come on. We're celebrating him. He is risen. We crown him. Lord of Lords. He's Lord of all. My God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we go back to these hymns. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember we used to sing these songs? Yes, Lord. just the excitement of God that he's risen, he's been resurrected and the Lord began to wait till you hear the revelation of remember me, the Lord hasn't forgotten you. Remember me, the Lord hasn't forgotten you. And I just want to ask the moderators real quick, um, can you give me a time, can you give me a, a moment, Dr. Miller, when God came in and resurrected something in your life that was dead? Just real quick. Can you tell just one little quick testimony of how something was dead? You thought it was over and God came in and resurrected that situation, Dr. Miller. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought my dream life was done and God came and resurrected that recently. So I thank God for that, the dream life. Amen. But Naya, can you give one thing real quick of what God has resurrected in your life? He did that. Glory to God. Hi, right, Apostle Francina. Um, this is very. This one, this one happened maybe a couple of weeks ago, maybe last month. Um, but I had a conversation with one of my friends, and one of my friends, she's very, very prophetic. And when she was speaking to me, she was seeing some of the challenges that I was facing in my life, and I, obviously at the time, I was very overwhelmed in my emotions. I didn't tell anyone, but. I was very overwhelmed with my emotions. I felt like I couldn't be the person who God wants me to be. I didn't really know how to navigate that in my emotions. But my friend, she was very prophetic, and she started prophesying. I started seeing things, talking about my identity in Christ, and seeing things, how I'm going to be, you know, speaking to people, how I'm going to be helping people, how I'm going to be reaching, you know, a lot of young people. And that resurrected my spirit. That resurrected, you know, the calling and the dream. That you know, God placed over my life, and yeah, that's that happened a couple of weeks ago, and yeah, it made it made a big difference. Amen. Um, I want to go to Prophet Sheila. Could you name something real briefly of what God did resurrected your life, resurrected something in your life? I would say creativity to be able to pen, uh, have a scrap anointing. I believe that's something recently um, that He's resurrected in me. Thank you for allowing me to share. This. Wow, those books are coming out with that resurrection. Pastor Michael, could you give us something that God resurrected in your life? Um, that's a good question. That's, uh, it's been a while. Um, I do recall uh, some years ago, where he just kind of resurrected my, my uh, passion for him, period because uh, of a series of events and things that I've experienced maybe kind of want to pull to the side and, and kind of forget about the things of, uh, of the church and God and everything else. But uh, yeah, that's probably the most rememberable. Wow, that is so good. My God. Dr. Ferguson, could you name something that got resurrected in your life? Good morning, Apostle. Yes, I would agree with Pastor Michael. Uh, sometimes when you've gone through, I can remember years ago saying, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. I want you, but I don't want all that extra. And just walking away from it all. But yet he came and re just resurrected everything and gave me a new fervency, a new fire 
and got a new revelation, a deeper revelation of who he is. And it just allowed me, and I said to myself, never again will I walk in that place. And But he truly resurrected my belief in who he is and, and who I was. And so I'm so grateful for it. Amen. That is so good because I think every last one of us have been to a place in that walk with God where you just felt like things were dead around you or you got discouraged and people around you trying to ask God, is anybody saved? And you just want to walk away from the church and just walk away from everything. But you be like, Jeremiah, it's just like fire shut up in my bones. You could not keep silent because the resurrected power that lived on it. it was, Jesus hadn't even born, wasn't even born yet in the physical and yet Jeremiah was prophetic. He began to feel that resurrected power inside of him that could not keep him quiet. Latone, is there something that you could just name real quickly where God resurrected something in your life? Are you there, Latone? Okay, I'll move on to um Sharon. Good morning. Could you come back to me? I'm sorry. Oh, ain't nobody to come back to. Okay, we'll just move on. It's okay. Well, we'll just go forth in the things of God. So I want a, a three people in the audience that you feel you felt that God resurrected something in your life. If you could just raise your hands, we'll bring you up briefly. Just say something. Encourage the people what God did for you. If you could raise your hands right now and you know that God resurrected something in your life. Uh, uh, go ahead, Miss Sharon. You can open up your mic. Go ahead. There's three. We need one more. There's three. Go ahead, Miss Sharon. I had to figure out how to open my mic. My relationship with my family, my sister um, had just really cut me off because of something that happened. And I had been praying that my family would be resurrected and Last year on my birthday, they showed up in Tulsa, and we just had a great time. Amen. I brought that at, at Eddie Marie up. I want her. Thank you so much. See, that's one. Okay, bring Eddie Marie back up. I brought her, I brought her up. Miss Justins, if you could reset the room. Miss Justins, go ahead. Good morning, good morning, and thank you. Um, I went through a major transition where I actually had to leave um, state and come back to my hometown. And I have been here about seven years now, and, and during the process of being reset and, and, and going through some changes and having to kind of transition, I lost my desire and fervency for work that I had initially started that God gave me to do. But in the process of me also understanding the transition, going through the transition and being processed through it, he resurrected my desire to go forth and to continue my work. And I'm so grateful and thankful. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Justice. Bishop, welcome. Bishop Good, can you give us uh, briefly what God resurrected in you? Your mic is open. Go ahead and speak, sir. Okay, we can't hear you. I don't know if your volume is messed up. I don't know what happened. Oh, okay, Miss Eddie Marie. Eddie Marie, welcome. Good morning, Kingdom blessings to all. I, I'm just so glad this is a perfect question this morning because, and this just recently happened to me. I would say from like 2021 current. And I think it's because of the flow, the path that he has me on with uh, Clubhouse. But God has resurrected my relationship, my passion, my drive for his word, for spending time in, in prayer with him. I just, I love, love, love the relationship. I say it's resurrected, but it's like he resurrected and brought it up to another level. So yeah. I am so glad and so happy to be uh, where he has me to be at right now. It's just a wonderful feeling. Thank you. God hey. bless you. Amen. Sharon, um, do you want to speak about the resurrection? I know you're doing a lot behind the scene and I caught you off guard. So I apologize, but go ahead. Sharon, are you there? Good morning. Yes. Uh, good morning, um, Apostle. Um, I was just trying to you know, think of something real quick. Well, of course, you know, I just give God glory for all that he's doing um um nothing really comes to mind real quick i mean not that he has done anything we know he has uh, just i'm trying to think of something that would 
really, um, I, I just can't come up with something right quick. I'm just, so I'm going to, I'm going to release mine. It's okay. It's okay. So let me just tell y'all this. Let me give y'all the update. So y'all know I had one day, I got the notice that I had to go down to Miami to get my passport renewed, which was a miracle that I got an appointment because I have to go to Nigeria. I got a lot of, um, um, I have a lot of engagements that's coming up in other nations, Portugal, King, Kenya. Um, so those are just the names, some of the places and also to go to the UK. And, and but my passport this year was up for renewal. And so I could not send off my passport to get the visa for Nigeria until, you know, because it ended with a ran into the six months. And, you know, it, uh, you know, according to the, the law that if you don't have, you can't go out of the country if your passport needs to be renewed in six months. So when I got there, um, it was a smooth, I want y'all to know it was so smooth. I made sure I went through my checklist and, uh, and I just thank God for my husband because it was the last minute and he had a lot of things to do. And also we were celebrating, had to release a video for Dr. Danae's birthday. And it was a lot of stuff going on. And then, um, on our way there, we caught that bus, and and, and so uh, y'all told y'all about how God resurrected that bus on the, on that day we left. And so when I got there, they went. Every, the line was. Um, I said, I said, let me go. And oh yeah, so when I got to the hotel, I was only across the street and round the corner from the passport place. I didn't know it was that close. So I walked there. The man said, just go across the street, round the corner, get on the elevator, the fourth floor. And so when I got there, the line was kind of, it was kind of long, but it went by so fast because it was a lot of people who did not have all their stuff together. And so when I got in and I went up to the counter, she went through everything. And then she said, do you have the, um, she said, do you have your itinerary of when you go into Nigeria? Well, I didn't have the itinerary because I didn't make the, the, the uh, I, you know, the flight information. I wanted to make sure that I could get all the other stuff done. And so she said, so when you go to the lady, when you go to the lady, you're going to, um, you're going to have to um, show her that you need a, a you got to show her your itinerary. So I texted her real quick, gave her the dates so she can go ahead and, uh, do the itinerary for me. But while she was doing it, they called my number so fast. So I went up to the counter and I gave the lady the information. And then she looked at my passport. Y'all, my passport looked like it had been in the ringer. Seriously. All the all the all the countries I visit and, and all these years, it was looking bad. So she said, You might have to fill out this paper for your passport being damaged and, and, and something else. So I said, Well, I just came back from Mauritius and it went through. She said, You did? So she went to her supervisor. Her supervisor said, No, she don't have to pay nothing extra and nothing wrong with this passport. It's just been used. So just let her go. And then because she was dealing with that issue, she didn't even ask me for the um, itinerary for me to go to Nigeria. She filled out the paperwork and all of that told me the cost of it because you could get a passport now and a card. And so I, I said, I'll get both of them. And then she turned to me and she said, you could come back at one o'clock, but come early because we close at two and get your passport. Well, I had to change. I was supposed to schedule to get back on the bus. So we changed everything, changed it to, you know what? I don't know how long I'm going to be in there. So we decided to just catch a flight back. So we got Southwest. I had some points and I said, we'll just fly back. So when I, when I got there to get the, the passport, it was over 300 people sitting there waiting on them to call their name to get their passport. And I was thinking to myself, oh my God, I'm going to be here long. So I turned to the girl next to me. I said, what time was your appointment? She said, my appointment was at 12 and they haven't called me yet. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, they got to call all the people at 12, 12 30, then one. And lo and behold, no sooner than 30 minutes later, they called my name before the girl that they called at 12. They called my name and then they called her after me. I went up to the front desk. The lady said, is, just check to see if everything is okay. And I was out of there after one. Y'all got to come on. Glory to God. Everything was fine. I got my passport. I got a nice, clean, new passport. And I was really excited because now I positioned myself and didn't wait till the last minute till, till my passport was, you know, 
going out. And I just thank God because God just made that transition smooth and it's because of the prayers. And then we were able to, even though our flight was a little late, we were able to fly because the bus that we were going to have to take, it was going to either get to us there at 11 o'clock p.m. that night or 3 in the morning. And I didn't want to come home that late. And so we got home a good, decent time. And I just really thank and praise God. I'm just telling y'all, when you trust in God, when you put your faith in God, he would just open up doors and open up ways that you couldn't even imagine. And while I was doing that, I had been praying for a situation for someone else. I just got engulfed in what they were dealing with. Sometimes when we're going through stuff and we start just saying, you know what, God, I'm going to put what I need on the side and I'm going to pray for other people. And I started praying for this person. They were facing a lot. And let me tell you something. In less than 24 hours, God turned that situation around for them. When I tell you it was a miracle, it was a miracle. When they text me, I almost ran around in the uh, in immigration of uh, the, the passport place, I was about to run around. God was just so good in what he did. And then on top of that, not only did he do that, but he did something else. He went exceedingly and abundantly all that we could ever ask think or imagine that is what our god did for us and we're so excited for them and sometimes when we put our knees aside and we start praying for somebody else god just begins to work a miracle and work things out for us and i'm so excited about that i know that god resurrected me in so many ways and i know many of you got a lot of more testimony he resur i'm telling you here i am i'm gonna turn 69 this year i'm already started i've already started planning my 70th birthday party in the year 2025 by god's grace i've already started so y'all better get ready and so I've already started planning my party and what I want to do. But I was thinking that before COVID hit, I was thinking, okay, I need to start thinking about retirement, slowing down, you know, staying home a little bit more. And all of a sudden, Clubhouse opened up. Y'all, I was waiting on y'all to give me the testimony. Do y'all not know, moderators? You were resurrected when you got in the Clubhouse. Because a lot of people didn't know us. Some people had heard of us. Nobody knew you. They had heard, maybe some people even knew you, but when you got in Clubhouse and some of you got your own room, you were resurrected. That was a resurrection in your ministry. That right there is a testimony within itself. You res res God resurrected me on social media. God resurrected me in other places. Your name is being known. When I go places and they and people come up to me, they say, well, who is Dr. Miller? Or they come to the church. They want to take pictures. That's a resurrection. He resurrected y'all ministry. And God didn't have to do that, but he did. Come on, y'all. He resurrected your ministry, gave you a new assignment. Y'all might as well tap on your mic. And even of being on this platform and being in other platforms. Same thing I talked with Pastor Eckhart. His ministry was resurrected. Y'all might think a lot of people knew him, but there's some people who still didn't know him, but when he got on this platform, when he opened up and got on, on a Periscope and got on these different platforms, we begin to see what God did in our ministry. And so I just, y'all can say what y'all want to say, but I thank God for Clubhouse. Come on, y'all. Come on. I thank God for Clubhouse, that God gave the, the person this vision for Clubhouse because we're reaching people every single day. And so I just thank God. Thank God for the replays. Thank God for Instagram. Thank God for YouTube. Thank God for Facebook. Come on, y'all. Thanking God for all these platforms and, and a chance to meet so many wonderful people. We were meeting so many wonderful people. We would not have known you had it not been for some of social media. So we, we thank God for the resurrection and may God continue to bless this and bless every endeavor. I thought I was going to slow down and it looks like God, as soon as I think that God is shifting me one way, he'll shift me another way. And we got to be ready. Know what that taught me about the passport? That we have to be ready. We have to have seeds and monies in our bank account that when they tell us that we have to go because they called, they texted me the day before and told me I had to be in Miami. Now, suppose I didn't have to 
the money. Suppose I didn't have the transportation. So God is trying to prepare us for our future. And that's why I know he's resurrecting us. He's giving us surplus. He's putting more monies in your surplus where it was drained because of COVID. He's resurrecting your career. You got to sit back and ask God, what are you telling me to do in this next phase of my life? And so I'm excited because this is Good Friday. But every single day needs to be good for you because we serve a good God. Now, let me just show you this. I really got excited because um, I remember this teaching started with Miles Monroe. And y'all saw me say, remember me. The Lord hasn't forgotten me. Put it in the chat. I want to see, re re reset the room. How many of you really felt in this season that God has forgotten you? You're saying, I don't really have a, a, a big testimony. I, I just feel that God has forgotten me. Come on, let's just be honest. And probably, Sheila, I heard you give your testimony about the thrift store. I was cracking up. Because let me tell you something. I used to be clean. I was clean as I don't know what. Come on. And people would ask me where I got my stuff from. And I would go to the thrift store. And by the time I washed Come it and on. ironed it, I resurrected those garments, Dr. Ferguson. And I would walk out with silk outfits. I will walk out with silk. I'm Come telling on. you right now, designer stuff. People didn't yes, know I was paying two or three dollars. I was looking like a millionaire. Come on, y'all. And I was going to the thrift store. They had this thrift store in Miami called Red, White, and Blue. And on, on, on a certain day, you would get discounts. I would go in there, and when I tell you I was clean, oh yes, I was. And if it was a spot, I knew how to get the spot out. I know how to, the only thing I didn't buy at the thrift store is undergarment. I didn't buy nobody underwear, nobody bras. But I did buy the dresses. Oh, yes, I would. In fact, that silk dress that my husband saw me coming to the church, he saw me coming to the church that Sunday when he said he looked at me and God told him I was his wife. That was from the thrift store. And I had a hat on. Come on, y'all. I'm telling y'all right now, the thrift store was a blessing to me. And I still like to go to the consignment shop sometime. You know, the consignment shop just is a sophisticated way of saying you at a thrift store. Right. Y'all know that, right? right? Okay. They just they just up their game. But that thing, when you were talking about that, Promise Sheila, I was cracking up because thrift store was my portion. Come on now. Talk about it. So I don't despise small beginnings. I, I know where God brought us from. I'm telling you, I know where God, and that's why I'm so appreciative to God and what he has done. Every time I walk in my house and I lay down in my bed, you know, there's nothing like being in a house that God has blessed you with and you really like the house. I look at it and I say, God, I thank you. God, I walk the ground. Sometimes I go to the backyard and you know what? Y'all remember, I always, every year, I would say we get ready to go to the mango farm. How many of y'all know we would go to the mango farm? Dr. Miller know that because we would go and we would give out mangoes. We would try to bless people with mangoes, bless neighbors with mangoes. And the Lord blessed me with the house with the mango tree this year, y'all. And it's going to be full. It is going to be full. And I was just like, God, you gave me a mango tree. Not only a mango tree, a banana tree. Not only a banana tree, there's some plums in the back. There's there's a there's an avocado tree. There's all kinds of trees. As I saw a lime tree. I'm just really excited about what God is doing. And so he'll give you the desires of your heart if you trust in him. Now listen, let me show you something. Remember me, there's 13, 15 people. If you have felt on YouTube, on Facebook, that God has forgotten you. You've been at that dry place. I don't, I don't know nobody who's never who's, uh, not been in a dry place where you just was just like, God, you know what? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just existing. I don't hear you. I mean, have y'all ever been to that place where you felt that you don't even hear from God? God, I'm asking you and I ain't heard nothing. God, I'm just been crying out and I ain't, God, ain't nothing happened. Nothing happened. God, what in the world is going on here? I'm really, really dealing with this. And and oh, and I want to thank you. I want to also thank my daughter, Lata. It was a pleasure of her coming with me. Um, she's opinionated, y'all. She got that lawyer mind. If you say something, she'll be, she got to go in like she in a courtyard, a courtroom. She got to rebuttal it with some information. And I'm only trying to give the summary. She wants to give us the whole the whole chapter. And so I just prayed and I asked God, I said, God, show me how to relate to this type of mind because I'm like quick, quick, and I'm moving on. And she's going to give you that scenic route. 
And I asked the Lord, I said, God, show me how to relate. Because if you don't ask God for wisdom, y'all will be clashing. So I said, God, you gave her that mind. And so, God, you help me to see to how to not clash with this mind. And the Lord began to give me wisdom. So we got to ask God for wisdom. When we see people, because people are different. They think different. And we got to get to the point. We don't think we shouldn't want people to think, uh, act just like us. And so if we had everybody acting like you or acting like me, what a boring world this would be. It would be so boring. It really would. But that's the excitement of meeting different, diverse, the diversity of what God is bringing in our lives, that the way they think, the way they operate. So I want to thank her for being, you know, coming with me and uh, helping me out and, and just, you know, she flew in and then got on a bus after flying in from Dallas. And so we just thank God. And so we're believing God that today will be a miracle day and, and, and a resurrected day. Now look at this, the phrase, remember the Lord hasn't forgotten you, carries a, com a, confront, a comforting and encouragement message, often shares in times of doubt and hardship. It serves as a reminder of divine care and presence, suggesting that even when one feels alone or forgotten, there is a higher power, which is Christ Jesus, that remains mindful of their struggles and their need. This message can be found in various parts of the Bible, emphasizing the belief in a compassionate, caring God who is always attentive to the individual circumstances. And that's the thing that's so crazy, because we know that God says that he'll never leave us, nor would he forsake us. But when we're in that dry spot, we can't. Y'all ever been going through so much that you just felt that you couldn't even think of a scripture. You could, you trying to think of a scripture and you couldn't even think of a scripture. You just in that dry spot. And so the phase refers to coming from in, in a moment in the New Testament. It was two criminals who were crucified alongside Jesus. One on the right and one on the left. One of the criminals marked Jesus, but the other one often referred to as a good thief. I don't know if there's a good, such thing as a good thief. He might have had a good heart, got a little straight away, you know. But, um, and so they had these two thieves on one on the right and one on the left. And I believe that that's really signifying what's happening in the body of Christ. And as you know, we, we are prophets, we get prophetic. Uh, we look at stuff and everything's prophetic to us. And so he says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom in Luke 23, 42. The request reflects the man's belief in Jesus' righteousness and his power to grant salvation, even the last moment of his life. So let me give you the, let me give you, let me go a little, a little bit, a little bit, a little too deeper in it. So when I went and I, and I began to Google how, what happens with a Roman crucifixion, the process of it. So typically it involved dismembering of the body. And crucifixion was primarily designed to cause a slow and agonizing death through suspension by the limbs, leading to a combination of suffocation, blood loss, dehydration, and shock. So here is this man uh, and these two things and Jesus on the cross. So uh, the way he was, the way he was uh, crucified on the cross, there was no relief when he would raise himself up. It was designed to cause every part of his body to be dismembered. That's what it was designed to be. Every part of his body to be dismembered. So if he would lift himself up, it was supposed to be dismembered. And so um, when he was, and so when I began to look at it and we got a little bit deeper in it, it, it began to show when this man said, remember me, remember me. He was getting ready to have that same type of crucifixion where it was going to dismember his body. When you lift up, it was supposed to cause the joint to pop out. And when you try to get a relief by just not moving, it would cause it's it was supposed to, it was supposed, it was designed to make sure every part of your body was dismembered. And so when the man said to Jesus, remember me, you know, when you go to your kingdom, when you remember me, he was acknowledging Jesus. He had a revelation of Jesus on the cross. This man, a thief on the cross, you know, he needed to be there. God, you know what? I deserve to be here. You don't need to be here, but I deserve to be here. They get ready to, to dismember my body. But I believe 
that this man Jesus can put my body back together again. Remember me. It's getting ready to be dismembered, but remember me. Will you be able to put my body back together? Oh my God, put it back together. And how many of us have been dismembered in the spirit? How many of you have been in a situation where everything that was in your life was dismembered? Nothing was going right, every single thing. And yet God was able to come in with his resurrected power. And he came in and he's able to resurrect you. Now, this is the crazy thing. The crucifixion was designed to make sure that he will suffocate, blood loss, dehydration, shock, and suspension by every limb. But the Bible says there was not one bone broken in his body. That right there was a miracle. Because the other things, that, that, the way that crucifixion was set up, their bodies was being dismembered. Th that stuff was, them joints was popping out from everywhere. That body was being dismembered. But it says that Jesus didn't have not one body, not one bone broken in his body. He might have been dehydrated, which we know he was, because he says, I thirst, I thirst. And y'all know they gave him vinegar. They gave him vinegar. He says, I, th I thirst. And, and you know, your body going to shock treatment. He was suffocating uh, with the breathing, the combination of breathing and blood loss. And all of that stuff was going on. He was being exposed and suffering in a public place. Everybody was looking at him and it was supposed to be a slow death. Until death, until he just, it, it, you go through all of that back and forth. You're really, really suffering. You're suffering a lot. So, and even when they beat him and they beat him in the back, of, you know, they beat him on the way to the cross. That, that rope that they had to beat him had little tiny th uh, nails, like little sharp things on the on the rope. And so when they would hit him, it would actually uh, 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 just hit the body, it would cause the flesh to just, you know, be uh, like somebody stabbing you with a knife. And so that's what was going on with him. All this stuff was going on. And I'm telling y'all right now, I know for a fact, I'm glad he didn't call me to die for nobody. Because I probably would be the one to be like, oh, God, you know what? I can't do that. Just go on and kill me. I can't do that. And so all of this is going on. And so with this man saying, remember me. Remember me when you get to your, your place. Remember me. He recognized him. And God is letting me tell you today, it doesn't matter what has been dismembered in your life. It doesn't matter what's out of place. What has been broken? What needs repair? When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, my God, because that was a military term, it is finished. He looked at his father, he said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Which it comes from in the Old Testament too. Um, when uh, you got to forsake your mom, you got to forsake everybody to follow God. He said, you got to, you know, when he talked about even a marriage. You got to leave your family and all that and cleave to your wife. Jesus is getting ready to be connected to the church. He was getting ready to be connected to the church. He was putting his head on the church because when they cut off John the Baptist's head, the church was dismembered. They didn't have a head. Nobody was in leadership. And that's why he says, foxes have holes, birds have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head because they were not in a position yet for Christ had not died to put his body, his body, his head back on to the body of Christ. When they were talking about, we talked about the abundance of God. Do you not know when they, when they let down their net, prophetically, when they let down the net, the net broke because the church was not ready for all the uh, fish represents our souls. The church was not ready for uh, the souls that needed to come to the body of Christ. There was so much stuff out of order. And when Jesus died, and remember, they let down that, and the net broke. And he was, it was really showing how many, all these souls that are just scattered all over the place. And then when the fishermen let down the net after Jesus had died, and they said the net did not break. That's because Jesus had positioned the church to be able to, to uh, accommodate the souls. Souls were able to come back into the kingdom of God. So this whole thing was really, really prophetic. It really was prophetic. And so... Um, so when they did all of this, and you know, when his mom was there, 
and he said, who is my mom? Who is my... He knew that he had to disconnect himself from every single thing to get on that cross to die for us. You got to forsake all to follow, God, to follow God. And then just the whole thing of piercing them in his side. The first Adam, when uh when the when the when the uh when they had uh he took the first woman out of his side you know out of his side and he made the woman out of it Jesus was getting ready to give birth to the church and so they pressed him in his side because he was giving birth to the church the the the, the, uh, the church came was coming forth in him the the church was coming forth so all of these things were going on he was entering we were entering into a new era. It was preparing us for the book of Acts. And then when he made that statement, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Because God couldn't even look at all the sin that was on Jesus. He took on all the sins, all the sickness, all the diseases. Could you imagine him on that cross with AIDS on him, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, every single thing. And then um, the Bible says he gave up the ghost, you know, it is finished. And then that military term, but they didn't know the devil didn't know that that it is finished from a military point of view. They thought that that was an act of surrender, but that wasn't an act of surrender. That was an act of we just kick your butt, devil. We are having authority now over death. You have no sting. And he found that out the hard way. So we see all of this. And so the Lord is saying to us today, as we enter into some of you guys that have a major celebration, um, celebrating the resurrection of jesus christ and it might not be the exact date but god is saying to you today i went through a lot i put up to put you back together again if you're broken and i have not forgotten you and that's why i said to you i'll never leave you nor will i forsake you and i'm telling you right now if you have a broken heart if you're dealing with a broken marriage if your ministry has been broken this day god says I have not forgotten you. And Paul says that same resurrected power that raised Jesus from the dead. He desired that. We have that. Use your resurrected power. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Speak to that dead situation and watch God resurrect everything that is, that's been laying dormant. Watch him resurrect it when it's lining up with the will of God. Because this day, he says, I remember you. The Lord hasn't forgotten you. I give my mic to Good morning once again to everybody on social media, Clubhouse, Facebook, and YouTube. This is the day, again, that the Lord has made, that I will rejoice and be glad in it. And again, this is another opportunity for us to rehearse the fact that God has not forgotten about us. I love that song by uh, Israel Holton, that God has not forgotten about us that god knows our names um but as we commemorate the resurrection of christ the bible says uh do this in remembrance of me which is basically a term that indicates uh the sentiments of jesus in his last prayer in john 17 when he's praying to the father he says lord make them one even as you and i are one, which is a, a, an indication that his highest desire is for us to be put back together, to remember, to be remembered as a body of Christ. So when we see and hear the words, do this in remembrance of me, it is uh, indicating the crucifixion, like you said earlier, concerning the whole objective of cru crucifixion is for uh, complete dismemberment of the body. I mean, from arms to, to ankles, every part of your body is dismembered. But the whole idea of the crucifixion is also, uh, when Jesus says, when the scripture says, do this in remembrance of me, is to put the body back together again. Whether you Jew or Gentile, whether you're male or female, free or bond or free, uh, the whole idea is putting us back together in such a way that God or Christ will have impact in the earth because of who we are in him. We are the body of Christ. We are the newly membered 
body of Christ to where uh, I'm the arm, you might be a leg, someone else may be a shoulder, but we all make up the body and that there is no part that's more important or more significant than the other. It doesn't matter what your office is, what your title may be. It does not establish you as being more significant than any other part of the body. And that's the beauty of it is that we are all, we all need one another. We all need what the, in the, the scripture says, even the, the smallest or the weakest part is the most needful. In other words, that's the part that we should give more attention to because a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So, again, it recertifies the idea that we are the body of Christ. But in order to operate as such, we must be remembered. We must be put back together, get rid of envy, jealousy, strife, and all the things that make up uh, the, what we call the world system or the uh, makes up God, a carnal lifestyle. When we walk in love, we're walking in Christ because God is love. I'm Pastor Mike, and I pass the mic. Wow, this is so good because even as you were talking, it just gives you so much revelation that even that crucifixion was designed to dismember the body of Christ, put fear in everybody else. You know, when they were asking Peter, Peter, um, he's one of the ones that was a part of them. You know, I guess Peter was thinking about because the Romans, they were they were um, those folks was fear, fear. I mean, they were vicious. And this is the thing that somebody actually came up with this concept of the crucifixion without an X-ray without really having all the knowledge of the medical, you know, our medical, our doctors have right now. And they knew what to do to put a person in suffering. That is just amazing to me. Like, really? Someone had to sit there and think about this and implement that into law with the Romans to bring forth crucifixion, a death, slow death sentence. And that was just amazing, but God was putting the body back together. I'm going to yield my mic to Apostle Eckhart. Welcome, sir. We Thank you so much, Apostle Francina. I honor you, Pastor Michael, all of those that are here on the platform this morning. Um, as you were speaking about uh, the crucifixion, uh, I, I was thinking of the thief on the cross. You mentioned him. I don't think in in all my years of ministry, I've ever preached a message on the thief on the cross. But in thinking about this, uh, I even though we don't know his full story, all we know about him was that he was a thief. Um, I'm wondering and I'm believing that during some time toward the end of his life, he had heard about Jesus because many people had. They heard about his miracles, his teachings. Multitudes had heard about him. I wonder whether or not he'd ever been in a crowd where he heard Jesus preaching or whether he just heard it from someone else, whether he was already arrested uh, when he heard about Jesus. But somehow he must have heard about Jesus, heard, heard the gospel and really believed that this was the Messiah. And on the cross, he, he told the other thief that this man has done nothing. He's innocent. So I don't know how much he knew about uh, Jesus being uh, accused of doing something he had not done, whether he knew about the jealousy and envy of the priest and the religious system against Christ. But he knew enough. He knew enough about Jesus to believe that he was the Messiah. He was the, the king. He was the one that was promised by God to be sent. And so he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So here's a thief that knew about the kingdom, whether he heard about it through Christ, through one of his disciples or through someone else. He knew about the kingdom and he exercised faith on the cross. And Jesus tells him this day, will you be with me in paradise? What an amazing, amazing story. Some, that is so unique in the Bible until it's, of course, mentioned in scripture and he goes to paradise. He's actually, when he dies, he goes to be with Jesus just by exercising faith in the fact that Jesus was the king, the Messiah, the promised one, the Christ, the anointed one, and that he had a kingdom. And then the grace of God, that in the, in the moment when Christ is dying, the 
grace of God that is present, the forgiveness of God that is present, even at that time, Jesus is not just thinking of himself. He actually tells this person, you'll be with me in paradise. Amazing. Of course, Jesus knew that this was the purpose for him coming and even dying and being crucified on the cross was to cause people that were already dead, already in paradise, waiting for him to come and go to heaven. And then, of course, anyone that would die would go to paradise. This was his main purpose in dying, in being crucified. So it, it gives us on the cross really the purpose of God you know, in the midst of all the suffering, the bleeding, the pain, the, the suffocation, the, the piercing. In the midst of that, God reminds us that the main purpose of all of this pain, agony, and death is to open the way for men and women to go to paradise, to be saved. So it's an amazing, amazing story right there in the in the biblical text about the purpose of Christ. So we'll never forget that the purpose of him dying on the cross was to cause men and women to be able to go and be with him in paradise. I thought that I, as I thought about it, I thought that that's just an amazing, amazing story. I know many have preached on it. It's probably been one of the favorite um, messages this time of year during the celebration of Good Friday and, and on Thursday and Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But I've never really preached on it. I've done I've done the seven last words. I've been in some of those services. I almost didn't. It, 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 seven last words of Christ. Some people may enjoy those services. It's, it's almost like I was at Christ's funeral. It, exactly. Those are some depressing services. <laughs> I don't do them anymore, but I've done them. I preached on I thirst. Um, my God, my God, why is that forsaken me? I mean, I've, I've been in many of those services, but I don't, I don't do them anymore. But then people still do them. God bless you. But I just, it's like, again, being at Christ's funeral. So thank God he rose again. We can have joy and victory. And that's it for today. God bless you. Thanks so much for the for the for the message. Well, Apostle, this is what I wanted to tell you. You know, when I traveled to Greece and when I we went to Rome, and well, when I went to Greece, they actually had the name of the thief that was asking Jesus to remember. It's in their it's in their library. They recorded it um, in Rome, and that name um, is pronounced Dismas or Dimas. And it means um, the sun to set and death. That was supposed to be the name of the thief. Um, even though they said it was not in the Bible when they mentioned him. But when they did their studies, I guess they have it in their library. They were saying that that was the name of the thief that was there. That told God to remember him. They call him a good thief. I don't know why, who was a good thief. But anyway, it means sunset. And it also means death. So even his name, the sun was set and his death. That's, that was the name of the person. And it's spelled, spelled two different ways. Dismas, D-Y-S-M-A-S, or Dismas, D-I-S-M-A-S. And um, I have books on that because uh, when you go to Greece and all of that, it really they really have a lot of information that we got books when we went to Greece and we have books when we went to Rome that you really could get some of this stuff and really go into the history of it. But they're saying that's the name. I don't know if you have ever heard of that uh, Pastor Eckhart, but they were saying according to, because they have a whole book out called, Who is the Thief that asked God to remember him? And they did their research on it, and they found out that that, that, that was the person. And they really go into his lineage and all of that. I don't know if you heard of that. I, I've never heard of that. We didn't, we didn't have any thieves in my neighborhood with that name. We had thieves like Tyrone and, and thieves <laughs> like Brooklyn. I've never heard of that. <laughs> that is so funny oh god but anyway and and so even with all of this rep 
revelation. God, they, you know, you got the whole people up there laughing. Folks are laughing right now. And I just think that when we think of the crucifixion of Jesus, it should give us the rejo- we should rejoice. It's almost like Apostle said. I, I, I just I didn't like going to those services, the last words of Jesus. And it just felt like everybody was so sad. And, and then they would sing that song, The Old Rugged Cross. And when they were, every time they sung The Old Rugged Cross, I would just cry. I just felt so bad. I felt like, I just felt like dying myself. And this is a good moment in our lives. This is an excellent moment in our lives that we should be rejoicing. Um, I'll go to Dr. Uh, Ferguson. Good morning, Apostle. I'm so glad you guys said that about those seven last words. <laughs> there is such a joy. But as you were talking earlier about remember me, the Lord hasn't forgotten me. I was reminded of Psalms 31, 22. And it says, in my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight, but you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. And so there, we can find ourselves in situations and circumstances of life that when we're going through, despite the fact intellectually, we know that we're not the only one that goes through. But when you're in it, it feels like you're the only one that you're so far off that it's impossible. Possible. And Lord, how could you leave me, forsake me? What, where are you? I can't hear you. I can't feel you. I can't sense you. We can have those moments because of what we're going through. And it's really important for us to fight our way back. Because when I look at that in Psalms 31, 22, it starts off in the O Lord. Do I put my trust? Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. And so we do have those moments, but I encourage us this morning that God has not forgotten us simply because we cannot perceive what he might be doing because of circumstance and situation, or we can't hear him, or he may be silent. If whatever it is, I think we make a note to ourselves. There are some times I put on the three by five cards certain statements or comments, and I put them in certain places in my office or in my Bible that when I'm going through, I'll go back and grab those so I can remember that despite what I'm currently going through, here are a list of things that I know God has done that even if he's not, I don't see him right now, sense him right now, hear him right now, he's still God, his word cannot lie. So I put reminders in certain places so when I find myself feeling afar, off that I can read it and help bring me back. It's almost like a rope, a survival line that will pull me back in. And I'll ask myself, how did I get out here sometimes? But life, the things that we go through can be so challenging to make us feel afar off. But I just want to remind us too, that God has not forgotten us. He is, we are always in his remembrance. If we look at the word and see where has God remembered, Remembered us. We can find it anywhere, but I think we may just not have thought to say, how, let me find scriptures where God keeps remembering us, that he's not a forgetful God, except for, for our wrongs, that he threw him in an eternal sea of forgiveness. But as his love causes him to constantly remember us. And so be encouraged this morning, and I yield the mic. So let me tell, let me ask y'all a question, Apostle Eckhart, Pastor Michael, uh, those of you that want to chime in. You know, when we were, when I was coming up, and I mean, I'm going all the way back because some of you young people, I know y'all, y'all never experienced this. When it was Easter time, first of all, all the stores would be closed on that Sunday. Really, all the stores would be closed, and we weren't in school on Good Friday. We were off. They, they said that you are on an Easter break. They will let you know it's an Easter break. And so we, we, we got out of school on Thursday. So we were off on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, came back on Monday. <clears throat> That's what we did in my school. Catherine, you could remember this. Also, doing devotion at the school, they would not only take you through silent meditation, <clears throat> but they also would give you a scripture over the mic. That's when I learned that scripture in uh, 
get in Proverbs, get wisdom and with all that getting, get an understanding. Because that was the scripture that I always had to read. And um, they will let you know. And then when we got back, this got back on Monday, they would ask us, how was the church service? Nothing was open on Sunday. Everybody was getting ready for Easter services and, you know, sunrise services. And we live in Miami, so people would go out on the beach and sunrise services would be, they would, they would um, do baptism. People would get baptized on that day. And it was a big thing celebrating God. It really was in the school. They mentioned it in the school. Um, it was a big celebration. Now they 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 call it um, <clears throat> uh, spring break. It wasn't no such thing as no spring break. It was called you have Easter break, which was really supposed to be the time. But now uh, you know uh, Walmart is open now on, on on Christmas, and 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 so those things used to not. I mean. Pastor Erica, do you remember those days that they had? Did they do that in your school? Had all yeah. those days where they could? Go ahead. Yes, well, I went to Catholic school, so we definitely had Easter break. And, uh, you know, that, that has, as a result of really taking anything godly or of God out of the schools, the schools have become totally secular now. And there's even no mention of, of Easter, no mention of even in t today's society. They don't even say Merry Christmas. They don't even want to say Merry Christmas. They just want to say Happy Holidays. But our society has become so secular. And we've really, we really said that we were divorcing the church from the state. Uh, that's the excuse. But yeah, it used to be a, a lot more of an acknowledgement that this was a special time of the year. Easter was something very special. Um, it was a unique weekend unlike any other in the year and but now that has almost been lost on many in this generation they have no concept of easter again it's just spring break and the emphasis of, of with young people now especially teenagers is going somewhere partying getting drunk and you know just being wild yeah that, that was not it was not like that growing up um years ago there was an emphasis on something very sacred about this week and this time. Exactly. Because I, I, I remember that. I don't know if anybody, I don't know if they did it, Michael. I don't know if they had it during your time. Do you remember that? Because we, we, we would be all, we did not go to school on Friday. Friday was not a day. That was, go ahead, Pay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was in preschool back then. <laughs> no, no uh, yeah, uh, I agree with uh, Apostle Eckhart that, uh, wow, the world is becoming more and more secularized. Uh, in some instances, that may be good because there are some aspects of religion that uh, was did not really tend towards anything relate, re relating to God. However, uh, those tenets of religion, especially the resurrection of the Christ, was kind of a... a a, a foothold in the in the fabric of United States, uh, the society and our custom. That's kind of the thing that held us, the glue that held us as a righteous country. Even though, yeah, we had slavery and all the other stuff that are uh, are skeletons in the uh, closet of the United States, but it is something that held the whole world in conscience of righteousness and justice and fairness for all people. And uh, now, yeah, yeah it, it, that's an interesting observation that I don't know if even our children of today even recognize the whole meaning of spring break. It may just be in their mind just another day that they get a chance to, uh, you know, not have to go to, to school. So it's very interesting. Well, they look at it as partying and just get a week off. But that, that's not how it was when we were coming up. We understood that. And... Um, the sunrise services and all that other stuff that was that's what was happening but we prayer was in school i mean they would pick someone from my class that would do the scripture we did the scripture and they would pray and even though they call it silent meditation you were able to pray nobody challenged that and so um and if we we were known as a christian nation everybody knew that 
we believed in God and, and, and in the, they were challenged by that. And so now we're wondering why is this it's all going another opposite direction. It's just like, you know, the kids are when I when I sit down to tell people that um when we would get off on Thursday and uh we didn't come back until Monday. We talked about it, you know. And so, go ahead, uh, Pastor Oh, yeah, I wanted to say, you know, instead of spring break, we had spring cleaning. I remember yeah. <laughs> this time, yeah. your parents would make you clean the house. So it was work during this time, spring cleaning. Yeah. You don't hear much about that anymore with children, spring cleaning. But uh, that's what we did. We cleaned the house yeah. during this particular time of the year. We sure did. That was correct. We know about that. We did spring cleaning. And that's what that's what happened. I mean, we would go in and we but now when you wash walls, the paint come off. But back in the day, the type of paint they had, that if you wash the walls, the paint didn't come off, the dirt came off. Go ahead, Prophet Sheila. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, I, I do remember those days of, of, of spring cleaning, uh of Pops and Cart. This is yeah, this is good. To God be the glory. Um for this word. This is really a powerful word and this is a sobering word. Um, and I was studying, even as you were um, talking, Apostle Francine, and I honor everybody that's in the room, everyone that's on the platform, um, Apostle Francina, Pastor Michael, Apostle Eckhart, and to um, Dr. Ferguson, to everybody that's on the platform, Sharon, and Les, Dr. Leslie. Okay, let me stop, because let me go ahead and release the word of the Lord. But, but I honor all of my kingdom brothers and sisters. You all are so um, amazing, and it's just so good to just be here. Uh, discussing this powerful topic about um, remember me, uh, the Lord has not forgotten about you. But I, I was uh, also doing some research about the name of the actual people. Across. I found that as well, Apostle Francina, that his name was Dismas, and the other one was Guest of P S P A S. But what also I found out, and, and this reminded me too, that even while Jesus was on the cross, how he demonstrated such compassion, that even while he was being going through the torture, uh, going through the, the mind-numbing, excruciating torment, that he still had a heart and mind and will to pray for other people, which, again, is the thief on the cross, Dismas. But also, uh, I learned that Dismas was also the first, um, he was um, canonized, and that um, the, Catholic, the Roman Catholic tradition now, um, they have a, a, a day called a feast, a feast whose feast is celebrated on March the 25th. I didn't know that. I'm like, they literally had him canonized until he yeah. canonized means, means to be officially um, to announce him as a saint. Yeah. So it also they announce him as a saint in the Catholic exactly. um, religion. And uh, Apostle Eckhart, you went to a Catholic church, they actually got, they have him in their documents as a saint. You're right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then one other thing is that when you think about it as well, um, he's actually the first person to um, answer the call of salvation. So I'm like, that, and I'm like, my God, that is powerful. And so that really encourages uh, those in the room. You have loved ones that are, you know, not saved. At the end of the day, don't discount. You don't know what happened. Even those that have gone on to be with the Lord, and you don't know what actually happened between them and that encounter with God. I still believe that. That, you know, that God could have easily saved them. And so that's why we need to leave the judging to God. But anyway, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But God is faithful. And then regarding remembering, I'm going to just release this one scripture. And I'll yield my mic. Psalms 136 and 23. Uh, it is he who remembered us in our low estate. For his steadfast love endures forever. God remembers us. So be encouraged, family. And to everyone under the sound of my voice. Happy Good Friday. Resurrection Sunday is coming soon. Know that he got up so that we can get up. I'm probably she like, yo, my mic, thanks for allowing me to share. Love you all. And we, you know what's so good about this thief is that we always tell the people to come to Jesus, but he actually was with Jesus. <laughs> he actually got converted being with him, with him in the situation. And um, he, and even recognizing that this man has done nothing. I, what I did, um, I, I know I deserve it. And I love the fact that he didn't try to um, make himself look like he didn't do nothing. And he, why, why am I here? 
you know, when you go to jail and talk to some of the prisons, they always, the majority of them always lie and say, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing, but he acknowledged that he came to Christ in spirit and in truth. And that was the thing. I want those of you to, because it's people who are sowing seeds today is resurrected. I want to pray over your seeds. If you feel led to sow your seed today, what you need resurrected, put in the chat, put in when you sow your seed, put in that resurrection. There's some things that God wants to resurrect in your life. And even as you sow the seeds today, on this good friday there's some people need some major resurrection in their finances and you get ready to get unexpected checks opportunities is about to open up god is releasing his resurrected power to you this day and as you sow those seeds into the kingdom of god i'm gonna pray at the end of course but god says make sure you put on there this is my resurrection seed, okay? That was one of the things that we did too. When it was time for us, when we got ready for Easter, my mother made sure we had some money in our um, our little pocketbooks when we had them little ugly candy curls and that big old bow in our head and that crundle slip. Maybe y'all don't know nothing about that. Ooh, I used to be. And, and, and going up in there, everybody came in there looking like, I don't know, they want us to look like Shirley Temple. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so, but I just believe that God is going to resurrect some things. So put in your seed today. This is my resurrected seed. Put in that resurrection. So we, so we're acknowledging that God is about to resurrect your seed to a, another level. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, I'm going to go right now. I'm going to go to Dr. Earl. Dr. Earl, I want to yield the mic to you. Good morning, uh, Apostle Francine, and good morning to everyone else in the room. Uh, I am receiving this morning. I appreciate the word that's going forth, but I will add that in Mississippi, we still observe Good Friday and, and uh, as a day that we're out in our schools, and my district is also off on Monday. We call it Easter Monday, but our spring break is separate, uh, But uh, and that, that has been uh, a tradition in our state to observe that, and in all of our classrooms and public schools, we are required to post a, 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 a sign that says, in God we trust. It was challenged, but our state defeated the challenger in that regard. And so while there are certain things we're not able to do, there are certain messages we'll stay still able to send. And I get the mic. Did you hear that, Apostle Ancott? And that's because a lot of people there from the South, they really experienced a lot of slavery and, and prejudice. Did you hear Apostle Ancott? He said his state, they acknowledge all of that. Yes, that's, yeah, yeah, we sure don't do it in Illinois. So we need them to come and lay hands on our, our, our leaders in Illinois. So thank God for Mississippi and other states that still have some uh, semblance of, of sacredness even in, in the public school system. And he said that they, they are still allowed to put in there in God we trust. And most of these states have voted that they take that out. So there's still hope. And there's still hope for Mississippi. I just don't believe if you keep keeping all of these traditions that God is not going to come through for you. That is so awesome, Dr. Earl. I didn't even realize that. I thought it was it affected everybody. I didn't even know that. Okay, I'm gonna um, ask, um, but now you briefly, if you could just go in and um, because we gotta we gotta go, we got a couple of things to do. Can you just uh, comment on that? Yeah, I'll say something quickly. I'll keep it short. Um, but yeah, God, God really knows how to find us in our lowest, our deepest moments. You know, that's who He is, and that's what He does. You know, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Um, because whenever we we feel you know down, whenever we feel you know like um lonely. You know, God really knows how to bring the fire, bring the zeal back into our lives. He knows who to surround us with. He knows who to uh, send, you know, the right people, the correct people to speak into your life, you know, to, to um, minister into your life. You know, he knows how to surround you with the people that will put you back on track, put you back on fire for him. And obviously uh, on, on Good Friday in, in the time of Easter, you know, um, it's, it's, it's God's job. You know, to resurrect us. It's God's job to recharge, but he knows as humans, you know, we can get weary, we can get tired, but he knows how to recharge us. And God does that through his words as well. So that's what I want to ask now. Thank you for letting me speak. Well, I'm, I'm excited because the, even here, the young people that's really, um, is not the Easter bunny, even though we did. Y'all know churches used to have that Easter egg hunt. 
big Easter egg hunt. And uh, but it, it's not about the Easter bunny. It's not about Easter egg hunt. We, even though we had to stay up and color those eggs. Dr. Miller, you remember having to color those eggs? I yield the mic to you. Yes, ma'am. I sure do. <laughs> Honor everyone on the platform. This is so good. It just brings us back to, you know, why Jesus died on the cross for us. And I love the fact that you said the thief did not try to deny. He knew that he had done something wrong and he let the Lord know. And that is so true. And I think that's what God always wanted us to be able to see too. That was a demonstration of, hey, all you got to do is be honest and I will remember you when you mess up. Just get it right with me. Just say, hey, God, remember me. I messed up. Forgive me in this area. I need your help. And so I just thank God for just allowing Jesus to down the cross. And he also wanted to just show his love. He demonstrated so much love. And, and I thank God for the thief on the cross, the thieves. And I also was thinking about the Roman soldiers. I, I, I They were so busy on task. They could not even discern that they were crucifying the Christ, you know, crucifying Christ. That was just weird that the thief would know, but the Roman soldiers couldn't discern that. Thanks for allowing me to share. But this is the thing that get me off, uh, Pastor Michael and Pastor Eckhart, any of the ones that want it, is the fact that the Romans were such a mastermind person that they would come up with such a thing of crucifixion. They had to study that thing for it to come up like that because that was really the epitome of suffering. That's what blew me away. Is that and they didn't have a they didn't have a problem sitting up there watching people going through a slow death. That was another thing that I was just blown away with. And it was just like, are you serious? They're actually watching the person go through a slow death. And Jesus didn't even do anything. Michael, I I, I yield the mic to you on that. With that crucifixion, the way the mind was. Oh, he probably, oh, oh, I think he's got an appointment. But go ahead, probably, Sheila, I'll let you um, talk about that. Yeah, um, it, it, it really, I mean, even as everybody's been sharing, um, Apostle Francina, it lets you know how in spite of how dark this world is and how how the deeds that we've done in our bodies, it just lets us know the love and the compassion that that, that Jesus has. I mean, and I can say has, but I say he still has because he's alive. He's alive and he still lives. And so it just, it just keeps us um, really a state of humility and, and appreciation and gratitude of how our Lord and Savior, how he he always has us on his mind, even when he's being tortured, even when he's going through unjust, because he didn't do anything. He, I mean, he was totally innocent, unlike the thieves on the cross. Uh, they were totally guilty, and I, you know, love what you mentioned about that. They knew that they were guilty, but he was guilty. He was not guilty, but yet we were all guilty, and. It's just, it's just really just a humbling time. It really is. But you know really what, Prophet Sheila? I can see why Jesus had to, and Pastor Michael, I'm talking to the phone so we can talk about that a little more sad before we get out. I can see why Jesus um, died with the two thieves because he was trying to show, I don't just represent the elite, but I represent those of you that you know you're guilty. You know you have an offense. That was really prophetic too. This man, is sitting up here. He knows he stole, but he was really giving you an example of what happens when you come to Jesus with salvation and his forgiveness. Because, I mean, that wasn't even introduced. You had to go to the temple and do all kinds of stuff to, to, to get your sins forgiven. But he turns to him and he says to him, could you remember me? And Jesus was right between them and he was letting us know this death that I got, this death that I'm about to encounter, what I'm about to do is going to represent people like this. It's going to represent, this is so powerful, it represents the thief. It represents the backbiter. It represents the gossip, gossiper. It represents the church that's out of line. It represents even that guy that was like, who the other thief that didn't even know who Jesus was and was running his mouth. Everything was represented. And Jesus is looking like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And it represents what, why Christ died for us. And it's just whosoever will, let him come. That's what was so powerful.
miracle right there. And I, I, I probably feel it now. I got that revelation. I was like, wow, it had to be that. Go ahead. No, no, I totally agree. It, it, but I'm like, my God. But then also it reflects the ambition, the all knowing of who God is. Because yes, he was Jesus, the son of man. But yet, oh, I feel, hallelujah. He was still God. He was the Trinity. Hallelujah. <laughs> God. But I just thank God. I'm, I'm excited. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful because he died for the sins that we that we've done, that we will do. Come on, that we thought about doing glory to God. And he covered it all. So it just it just it just shows the mercy. Thank you, Father. The Lord just talked about the mercy of God, the unconditional love of God that he had for the world and sending his only begotten son to die for the world. I yield. Thank you for allowing me to share. He was displaying his grace even then. Yeah. He was displaying his mercy even then. Even though they might not have had the totality of that revelation. Yes, he, was, yes. he, was, he, was, he was doing that. And that's what's so powerful. I want to pray for you right now. Uh, those of you that raise your hands about resurrected power. I also want to pray over your resurrected seed too. And then we're going to let you go so you'll get ready for the decree. We got another appointment. Thank y'all so much for just coming into the room on your day off. There's a lot of people off today, but yet you still got up. And as soon as we opened the room, you came into the room. And I just asked the Lord to give you something special today because you could have slept. You know, I know that bed felt good. You didn't have to get up. I'll just get the replays. But you came into the room. And I pray today that same resurrected power that raised Jesus from the dead. I just pray right now. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to ask. Providence Sheila, can you pray over the over them that need resurrection and pray, pray over their resurrected seed today? Because I believe that they're going to have testimonies even, even before the day is out. Even as you're planting your resurrected seed and even as you believe in God to have these resurrection resurrected. I'm excited today because I even see God resurrected some things in our families. And those of you that need, your children need to be resurrected. We're going to believe God. We're coming in agreement with you because this is the reason why Jesus died to give us hope. And if he can look at a thief and say this day I will get you enter into paradise with him. Y'all got to get this up in here. That man is going down in history of what he he said next to Jesus as a thief as looking at as a nobody apparently he was he was poor for him to be stealing in the first place uh and i'm telling you right now god is getting ready to resurrect your situation go ahead Father. hallelujah father we bless you we thank you we honor you we thank you for every person that is here that has raised their hand father god that's believing you for resurrection in any area, every area of their lives. Father, we just agree with them in prayer as we're standing on your word, Father God, because Jesus died. He rose on the, oh, hallelujah, on the third day with all power in his hand. He is the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in him, though he died, yet shall he live, according to John 11 and verse 25. And so, Father, we thank you for your resurrection power. We thank you, Father God, that you are resurrecting lives. You're re re resurrecting relationships. You're resurrecting finances, Father God. You're resurrecting every area of our lives that we would just believe. And so, Father, we speak the blood of Jesus over everyone that has raised their hand, Father. Cover them with the blood. Thank you, Lord, for their testimony of how you resurrected their situations. And so, Father, we bless you. We seal it with the blood. We thank you that we no backlash, no retaliation, or will be assignment of the enemy. We counsel every assignment of the enemy. And we decree and declare as we pray of the prayer of agreement, you have received your resurrection on today as Jesus Christ on this Good Friday. He died on the cross, but in three days, he rose from the dead, resurrected with all power in his head. So whatever you're believing God for, we're standing with you, we're believing God with you for total resurrection in any area, in every area of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, hallelujah, amen, and amen. I just felt like this. The Lord told me to tell someone that you are not going to lose your car. You are behind in your car payment. The Lord is going to give you favor. You're not going to lose your car. I just heard the Lord say that. I heard God say that I'm going back. And those of you that's behind, let's reset the room. Father, we just, let's reset the room. Those of you that's behind in bills, those of you that's been going through and 
trying to figure out how you're going to pay certain things, I want you to raise your hands right now because God says, I have not forgotten you. I have not forgotten the seeds that you have sown in the past. I have not forgotten the times that you gave when you didn't have. I have not forgotten you. And so I want to resurrect that right now in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands right now. Those of you that's on Clubhouse, you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, whatever social media that you're on, the Lord has not forgotten you. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. As that thief says, remember me. God, we say to you, remember me. As we remember you, God. Somebody said, wrote a song and said, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And God, there are times that we've stood in the gap for someone else. And it's so hard for us to stand in the gap for ourselves. And so, Father, they're crying out to you today. It's me, God. It's me. It's me that's standing in the need of prayer. And so, Father, we thank you. We come forth, God. And we come in agreement, God, that they will they will feel the resurrected power. They will experience the resurrected power. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead. As they begin to walk in it. God, those that have their bills behind. God, that you will cause something supernatural to come, that they everything that they need will be provided, even if it's the favor of God. God, there are people, God, you can cause people to pay off their car, pay off all of their bills. God, as you begin to cause them to flow in that resurrected power, God, those seeds are just going all over the world. They're going all over the world. They're going in places, and they're putting them at different seats and tables, and God, we just thank you, God, that you're resurrecting every single thing. There's nothing dead that we're around today. God, we thank you, because you're resurrect it's going to be so noticeable god it will be a notable miracle god oh my god it will go down in history even in their lineage god of what you did for them even this day father we just want to thank you for dying on the cross for us we want to thank you god for just going through those steps and going through the pain and going through the agony we thank you father for all that you're doing in our lives and we're so appreciative god and god help us god to be able to be that vessel, to, to go in and be the answer to people's prayers today. We thank you right now, my Heavenly Father. And God, we glorify you, God. And we thank you for performing a miracle. If they will have a testimony. It was a test, but it will be a testimony. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for it, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you guys. Uh, 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 Pastor Norman, are you there to tell them about your workshop tomorrow? And then we'll get ready to let y'all go so we can get ready for, uh, I got to close the room. So we just we just want you to know, that, uh, don't forget Sunday, we'll be at the church service. It's our special family and friends day. We're excited about the movement church. Absolutely. Now, don't forget on tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. is the algorithm of wealth. You still have time to go to michaelnormanministries.com and sign up. We have payment options available for you. And it's going to be an incredible opportunity to, to uh, once again, take control of your financial destiny and become the lender and not the borrower. So we'll look to see you then. Go to michaelnormanministries.com. Sign up today. And give an address to the church. The church is located 2160 North Hiawassee. You'll have to look that up because that's an Indian word. H-I-A-W-A-S-S-E-E. -S -S -E -E, Hiawassee Road. 9 a.m. 2160 North Hiawassee Road. The Movement Church will look to see you then too as well this Sunday. Apostle, you want to give them what they're doing uh, uh, at your, uh, Saturday? Tomorrow, Saturday for your service for your service in Chicago? Yeah, our service is Saturday 2 p.m. 3821 South Michigan on the south side of Chicago. And um, have a great, great weekend as well. Thank you. Amen. Um, let me see if I have anybody else. I think I got everybody. I, I probably Sheila, are you doing your your um on Saturday? Uh, just the book signing. Oh, we're having the book signing. Oh yeah, go ahead. Talk yeah. about that. Yes, we will be having a book signing, and it will be on Saturday tomorrow from one to four at Half Price Bookstore in Arlington, Texas. Oh, she's actually Mansfield, Texas. And the book is that the new book, uh, Daily Decrees and Declarations for Victorious Living, inspired by the decree room under the leadership of my apostle, Apostle uh, John Eckhart. So meet us tomorrow at Half Price Good Storage. And again, it's Mansfield, Texas. Uh, the address is 1551 U.S. Highway 287, Mansfield, Texas. Again, from 1 to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, hope to see you all there. Thank you so much, Apostle. So, no, we're not having the actual uh, Kingdom Talk live tomorrow with us. We'll have a good Thank you so much for allowing me to share. Love everybody. God bless. Okay, Dr. Miller, won't you?
want you as a member of our church to invite the people again to the church service on our, on Sunday, our friends and family day. Yes, come on out and join us at the Movement Church because we are on the move. We're having a family and friends day. We'd like to invite you all to come and celebrate with us. Thank you. And Pastor Mike has already given you the address because <laughs> I forget it. All right. Well, God bless you. We love you. Um, we get ready to get out of the room. Uh, Y'all get ready to go into the decrees. We love you. Have a blessed weekend. Thank you, Benaya. Um, they have church service. Could you give that give the, talk about your church service in uh UK? Yeah, our church service is is in London. It's in Enfield. The postcode is in to 60 yes is um 47 london roads and our services at 11 a.m and you can join the facebook live service as well that'll be happening um as well 11 a.m on sunday and don't forget on uh sunday night sunday night i will be doing at 11 p.m eastern standard time i will be doing uh a, a, a live uh what's the prophetic word for the month of april and y'all to see the flyer, please uh, share that with someone. We're excited about what God is doing in this hour. And we give God the praise for it. You guys have a blessed weekend. We get ready to let you out of the room. So it's five, four, three, two, one. Shalom, shalom, and double shalom.